In the meantime, the mother of a teenager facing terror charges speaking out against ISIS. Her son, 19-year-old Mohammed Hamza Khan, accused of trying to join the terror group last fall. The suburban Chicago mom wept as she read a statement in a federal courthouse lobby. The panic spurred by these groups and the violence committed by them find no support in the Shura and are completely at odds with our Islamic faith. We condemn this violence in the strongest possible terms. Leave our children alone. Here now, Lee Carter, partner at Ms. Lansky and partners and a communications expert. Judith Miller, Pulitzer Prize winning investigative reporter, author, and Fox News contributor. And Lisa Daftari, Mideast journalist and Fox News contributor. Great panel today for this. Uh, Judy, let me start with you on this. The mother weeping, saying, ISIS, stop trying to recruit our kids who are here in the U.S. Is that good enough? Well, it's a start. And it's what every Islamic cleric and community leader and ruler of a country ought to be saying, leave our children alone, because this is a fight within Islam for the soul and the future of Islam. And a mother like this, who has the courage, who's clearly observant, because she's wearing a, a headscarf, comes out and appeals not only to the the leaders of this terrible terrorist group, but to her fellow Muslims. Mm -hmm. Lee, help us keep these children. All right, I, I'm, I don't mean to be somebody that's not believing what she's saying, because this is probably exactly how she feels. But not just one, but three of her children were actually involved in this alleged plot, Lisa. And, and could it be that maybe these words are coming out now because her kids are in big trouble? Yeah, I don't know if I would call her courageous or desperate in this moment. I wish that she would have said this before her child got arrested, before many children get arrested. Meaning, if there were more mothers calling out for the same thing, this woman wouldn't make headlines. And you know, now she's trying to appeal to a, a, a judge. Her child is in this, this very compromising position. And you know what? We can blame the internet. We can blame ISIS. Of course, they're out there recruiting, but we can't control them. And to a certain extent, we can control that and what goes on online. But where's the parental control? Where's the control? Where's the responsibility and the accountability on the part of these parents and other parents like them? Well, let me ask Lee Carter because she's a communications mm -hmm. expert. So. What is ISIS doing that is so successful to get to these kids? You know, it's really hard to think of it in any other way except they're being really professional marketers. They're not using weapons of mass destruction. They're using weapons of mass marketing. They're getting to know their target audience, their vulnerable youth who are needy, who are scared, and they're tapping into them. They're going to the websites they're in. They're advertising them. They're appealing to them. And it's sick, but we're not thinking about these people as business people, as marketing folks, and they're using those tools and those tactics to win over our children, and it is terrible. So what should we be doing? Well, as parents, I think we really need to be vigilant about what our children are doing. But we need to think about them not just as terrorists. We don't need to be afraid of just terrorism. We have to be afraid of our children turning into terrorists themselves. And that means we have to look at things entirely different. We don't need to be just vigilant about where we go. We need to be vigilant about our homes, about the conversations we're having, and about where we're looking for terrorists. Judy, do you agree with that? Well, teen yes, absolutely. But teenagers are naturally secretive, and they're finding their own way, and they're defining themselves, and they want to make a difference. And if they think that this is kosher, so to speak, or Islamic, and that they can be better people by doing this, it's going to be seductive. We've got to work on messaging. Mm -hmm. We have to work on, yes, better parenting or more vigilant parenting. But more than that, we need the community to stand up and say, these people, these terrorists do not speak for our religion. Without that, this is a losing fight. But we don't even have the White House saying that. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. You're so right. you have the leader of the free world right. not saying that. Exactly. And if he is a role model to any of these young kids, quite possibly, if he's not saying it, they're not getting the message from him, Lisa. No, they're absolutely not getting the message from anyone, from the top down. And as Judy said, we have to, before anyone and any of the care or any community leaders can scream Islamophobia, they have to ask themselves, what have they done to protect the name of Islam so that these headlines and these jihadi attacks do not represent uh, their religion? And, you know, the second point I want to actually make here is that Jihadi is using children. It's not. This is not the first time. ISIS is not new to this. We've seen it with the Palestinians using children as shields, using them, you know, making them both the victims, going after children and killing them, like in Boko Haram, how, how they're after these right. young, young women. Mm -hmm. And we've seen it throughout decades of, of jihadism. All right. Very fascinating discussion with women who all have something great to say about this. Thank you for being here.